One of the most obvious ways uh, is to deal with the in-house conflict. Because conflict is a part of human organization and so wherever you have humans, you have conflict. But that conflict doesn't always have to be negative. Whenever we have interdependent relationships uh, at the workplace, which practically all our organizations work in teams, and so just by nature of being on a team, uh, your work your work is, is dependent on someone else's work. But then when there's conflict with that other person, uh, it really downgrades um, not only our, our outputs, but also our motivation. Uh, when we talk about resilience, you know, resilience is that quality of being able to bounce back up. It's that quality of being able to navigate around obstacles. It's that quality to be able to see the silver lining behind uh, otherwise difficult things mm -hmm. and, and uh, to keep you from wanting to give up and, and probably uh, one of the, the biggest causes of stress in the workplace is not just the workload but it's those simmering conflicts that, uh, that may go on a long time and you know at a low burn and that just adds more stress and instead of the relationships being a source of strength for each other they become a, a burden and a drain but I think if we take a preview of curriculums of universities, uh, master's programs, undergraduate programs, uh, they all, all almost completely void of how managers should handle conflicts. And we typically, I mean, especially in the um, relief and development world, we often have have ways of, um, of making complaints and um, you know formal ways of getting a message out. Um, but we don't, we haven't done uh, very well on just the, the normal interpersonal conflict. One real important way of resolving, of, of adding to our resilience is helping us to be um, better skilled at handling our interpersonal conflict so it doesn't accelerate and, and spread around.